Type 9.
morning traders welcome back to another live stream by the everyday growth advisors another week new ticker monday welcome back to the stream here i hope you guys had a great weekend what a eventful eventful weekend here with everything gapping up pre-market really really nice stuff here um welcome into the stream as usual it's about to be a crazy week and you know what right before i start this week let's just go ahead and say that whatever ticker that we pick on friday what we're gonna do is just go ahead and take it anyway God damn it, guys. Come on. The past two weeks, we picked two tickers and they both ran up over the weekend. So I'm guessing that there's some hocus pocus to this live stream where somehow whatever ticker that we call out <laughs> gets bought up over the weekend. <laughs> Don't you find that crazy? Last week, it was Intel. And this week now, it's Baba. And I feel like whatever ticker that you guys pick on Friday, we're just going to go ahead and buy it anyway. Because it's probably going to gap up, right? My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, today's going to be a pretty jam-packed stream, so I hope you guys are ready. I'm going to get this done over here. If you're into the stream right now, make sure you smash the like button. That's what we do over here. If you come here for this stream, it's an educational stream, so I appreciate you. Um, we don't teach people, um, you know, how to collect fish here. We teach them how to fish. So, if you enjoy the stream, please smash the like button. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Share it with your dog. Share it with everybody who you know who wants to learn about trading because that's what we do here we teach okay you can see the category is education not fishing throwing okay not like other streams we specialize in teaching you how to fish also remember this week we'll have two more webinars uh tomorrow the webinar will be how to swing trade it will be a 30 minute brief webinar kind of showing you the bullet points a little bit of a snippet out of the everyday growth advisors mentorship course uh providing you even more free content we always do these things every week. And then on uh, Thursday, we'll have another webinar on how to position trade, which is how you set up a longer term trade, something that you have to do analysis on, yada, yada. So I hope you guys like what we do here. If you do, remember, all you have to do is leave a like because that really helps me out. Okay, and that's the only thing that I need because the likes will help this channel to grow. And I can't believe it that we are already at 2,100 subscribers. So let's get started with the pre-market rundown here. Uh, let's have a look at the news, see what's going on here. Um, and for those who are here for the first time ever in this live stream, we don't follow the news to follow it and, and act on the news. We follow it to read it for entertainment purpose. Number one, number two, to kind of gauge how retail traders would be reading the news and behaving, because as we know, uh, retail traders tend to read the news and and perf and say stuff like, "Oh, if the market is running up, we should buy calls." Whereas we know as professional traders that when the market is running out, running up, that's the time you should be exiting calls and you should be starting to hedge your positions. Okay, so we are exactly coming to that point right now. We have been talking about this for at least three weeks now. Okay, um, the fact that. I have been mentioning over and over and over and over that what's going to happen is we're going to see a euphoric wave up trying to break up through all time high a nice little push up one a very big candle and then followed by a rug pull back to the 50 moving average uh, but more on the technical update later let's go through the news and see what's going on over here uh so that we can get a rundown here so follow 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 okay so china's vaccine front runner aims to beat COVID the old-fashioned way something about how they're using rna techniques to kind of get a virus done uh, and then i think in response the u.s said oh there's some some vaccine and they approve it for using blah 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 and the whole market got euphoric and now it's pushing up again uh what i really do want to see here though is the dow pushing up i want to really see the dow catch up which is you know something that we've been talking about for a very long time a breakup of this trend line over here would be a really good sign for the dow to catch up to everything else over here so any kind of a positive vaccine news may push the dow up all the way up and honestly that would be a really great great move because remember what we have been doing for the past one month has been accumulating all positions within industrials and energy and that's going to pay off really bigly for all of us whoever who has been attending this live stream you've been following the call outs you've been you know um taking all the positions that we've been taking uh we have been calling out for i think weeks now we started with boeing we have a heavy position in boeing we have a heavy uh, not a heavy but a generally light position in xom exxon mobile all the tickers that we've been collecting uh we also have positions in intel which is an over oversold chip company uh based on its uh um its delay in a chip that it was not going to produce till next year or something uh, or the next two years 
Uh, and so all of these things, it, you know, we are really, really positioned here well for a Dow Jones run up. OK, and that's what we really want to see. OK, so I, I really hope that that kind of comes out. Uh, Hong Kong reports first coronavirus reinfection in technology worker. OK, tourist hotspot Bali to remain closed for foreigners all year. God damn it. I was I really want to go go back there, man. Honestly, guys, I'm going to tell you very soon. You're going to hear from me when everything opens up. Hey, guys, I'm in Bali today and I'm going to be chilling here for a month. So I'll be running a live stream from here because the beauty of this is I can be anywhere and doing this. Right. And that's a really great thing because trading is a profession where you don't need to be in a specific place. Right. And so I've already kind of done the calculation. It's actually pretty affordable to live in Bali and then move to Thailand or something. I, I honestly, I, I want to do that for a while. And I, I'm going to be working towards that uh, kind of like um, exploring the world and also trading at the same time. It's going to be a fun experience, I think. And doing my master's at the same time. So it's like kind of productive. You know, you're doing something you don't like. You're doing something you like. Um, and it cancels each other out. That's the, that's the way I roll. Okay, U.S. order to label Hong Kong goods as you made in China is uncivilized. Uh, okay, Asia's best performing currency gets boost as central bank stands aside. I think this is, is this the... What currency is that? What are they talking about? Philippine peso. Oh, okay. Huh, interesting. Come on, Bloomberg. Okay, whatever. You don't want to let me access it? Fine. Um, Nintendo, ad, you know, I should probably just get a Bloomberg subscription. Screw this. Nintendo adds another three billion as Robinhood traders press play. Woo! I guess so. Uh, Boeing boosts 737 Max safety with spacecraft drone technology. Wow! What? What the heck? Da da da! Board space vehicles, drones. Da da! Oh boy! I think he, I I feel like you can do one of these things and get the article for free. Somebody told me about this. Does it work? Maybe it does. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Nice. It works. Okay, then. <laughs> if you just add a dot after the com, <laughs> it gets you the article for free. So, Okay. Bolsa, long term. I didn't actually read this one. Uh, technology borrowed from space vehicles, urban drones that can provide data to ha help back up its sensors. Okay. that's. I guess that's, that's good news, right? For our Boeing position, uh, I have a pretty, I have a decent sized Boeing position. It makes up seven percent of all my positions right now. That's uh, that's an overcommitment from my part. Uh, but I am bullish on Boeing in the long run because it operates in a duopoly, right? Um, okay, well, this doesn't it, this doesn't mean anything particularly. Uh, but we'll see where Boeing, what Boeing does today. Uh, and then prices raised, da da da. Okay, Tencent nears deal to take gaming from something private. Hedges against flare up in China tensions with US. Okay, fine. Bloomberg, eh, I think bullish, leaning bullish, right? Facebook stoked Washington's fears about TikTok, emphasized China internet companies pose a threat. Okay, Trump to highlight successes in nightly appearances convention. Don't want to know about that. Actually, let's just skip the market news here because. Um, we want to read the relative stuff. Global stocks rally off on potential coronavirus treatment. Remember, the word here is potential. Okay, so the euphoria might be short lived. How many times have you seen this kind of a news headline this year? I think we must have seen it at least five times. Okay, once with Gilead, once with Novavax, once with another company, once with the Chinese company, once with like now. There's been at least five times. Okay. Uh, oil and gasoline prices climb ahead of U.S. Gulf Coast storms. Okay, that might be good for our friends at ExxonMobil. So we may actually see some nice gains for our portfolio in the near term. Remember, this is the game, guys. Okay, this is the game. What do you do? You basically make your decisions based on how the stocks are performing, how undervalued they are. You position yourself to succeed. And then when something spurs the stock market on, you benefit from everything at the same time. It's like a rush, you know? It's like at first, your portfolio might be looking like a little bit like um, like this, you know, like kind of like like that. And then what happens? Da -da 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 -da, and then, right? Why? Because you, you started making all the good decisions here, right? And then once the good news starts to come out, you see an increase, acceleration, right? And then after a while, you'll see one of these again, and then it'll be higher. And then what do you do? You add your positions again. Why? Because you still fundamentally believe in your investment thesis. And then you see another one, right? So that's what we're doing over here. We're building the first wave here. We're building the first wave. We've been building this for a month now. If you've been attending this live stream, that's what we've been doing. Building positions in good companies that will succeed in the long run, okay? And now we're starting to see 
things pick up, things become better. The COVID has been kind of muting everything, making you know them cheap, and that's what we want. We want opportunities to find cheap businesses that will perform better than the entire market, okay? And that's what we've been doing. So give yourself a pat on the back if you have been following this live stream and you have been actually, you know, following along. All right. Ant Group pu pushes ahead with listing plans. Investors see big IPO gains. So I'm not sure if you guys know, but Ant Group is part of Alibaba. That is the ticker of the week this week. So I'm going to go through it in a little bit over here. Um, and our timing just is impeccable, man. I just, I, I can't understand it sometimes. Last week we had Intel, this week we had Baba, and then when we covered Roku, it popped on us, right, midweek. All the tickers that we cover in the live stream, somehow they pop. I feel like we should just buy them anyway. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, Blackstone makes $2.3 billion deal for Japan, Japan drug business. Okay, money funds wave changes, char charges to keep yields from falling below zero. Ooh, wow. Okay then interesting that is that is definitely an interesting development there chinese home buyers paid huge deposit but now worried they will be left with nothing Oof. Uh, the median s p stock has never been more expensive and there is this is probably an opinion kind of a base article but then i don't doubt it though i don't doubt it i have been talking about it for a long time that we are reaching euphoria levels okay and we have to take steps to protect your capital at this moment all right so definitely take your steps. Guys, I really, really hope that you can help me out here. Smash the like button if you're here. Let's get to 60 likes. Come on, guys. I really, really hope we can get to 100 likes if we can. Um, please, please take a second out of your day and just smash the like button. That's what I'm asking for. See, you, you don't need to donate. You don't need to do nothing. Just smash the like button. That's what I'm asking for. Please just do it. Thank you. All right, pre-market movers here, uh, fastly up about 5 to 5.8%. 5 this is a stock that's been actually going parabolic recently. Uh, might want to keep your eyes on that one. Uh, but for today, what I'm keeping my eyes on, I posted on Twitter not long ago. Uh, so I'll show you here. Um, today, I'm keeping my eyes on BABA, Facebook, Boeing, and VIX as well. I'm looking to get some adding on to my VIX position uh, because I feel like this is a good time to get it cheap. Um, and so, you know, adding on as a hedge to my portfolio long positions, uh, this would be a good time to pick up hedges, right? When the market's rallying, you don't pick up calls. Remember, guys, you don't pick up calls when the market's rallying. What do you do? You pick up, you can pick up calls, but you pick it up in hedging positions, okay? Um, and then also, um, you pick up puts, right? You never pick up calls on the rally. You always pick up calls on the dips, right? Um, I think I've mentioned this enough times, right? You you see a wave like that, right? When and then another wave, right? You you don't pick up calls here, right? You don't pick up calls here. You pick them up here. Why? Because premiums are depressed here, IVs are depressed here, right? But IVs and premiums are maximum here. These are the maximum. Okay? And I, that's that's like, it's common sense, okay? It's common sense. You never buy on the peaks, you buy on the throws, all right? Uh, Tesla up 4% again at $3,100. That stock is gone, gone. Um, and then let's see the top losers here. Nothing really that interesting. AutoNation, Moderna down. Um, Apple up another 3% here. Uh, I think the split is around, yeah, the split should be, I think it's today, was it today, yesterday? I, I'm not sure, I think it was today. Or it's coming up maybe this week sometime this week i'm pretty sure it's this week or next yeah it's definitely this week the split is this week uh so expect uh, apple stock is gonna you know kind of uh, get on a little euphoria here um and i remember I've, I've i'm already out of apple stock i exited around 490 I've, it's fine i don't really care that i left 20 dollars on the table for me i've exited at a price that i'm happy with okay um and quite honestly it, it doesn't i don't have fomo at all because i've made enough on it okay um, let's see here. Airlines. Also, the other thing that you want to track this week is airlines. Look at all airlines. They're up about 2-3%. These are things that could run on euphoria for the virus news. Okay. So keep keep tracking air, airlines. Boeing also up about 1.5% here. So keep track of those. These are important things to keep track of this week. Um, if euphoria builds up and we, you know, go parabolic, that's what is going to happen. Okay. Okay, and others, uh, Neo up about 2% here to 1450. Um, let's see, nothing else here that makes sense. Let's see on the S&P 500, GE, 
Carnival CCL here, Carnival Corp, nothing else really notable. The NASDAQ, we have Microsoft, Tesla, JD. JD is a competitor of Alibaba. We'll be going through this in a second. Um, and then NASDAQ General, there we go. Okay, do we have news today? We have a three-month auction bill and a six-month auction, auction bill for treasuries. And then the Chicago Fed National Activity. Okay, nothing really interesting today. All right then, um, let's get to it. The SPY technical update here. Uh, so we are now approaching the levels which we have been talking about for a while, okay? Uh, this is exactly what I, I had said might happen, um, and it is actually happening, where we are going into a euphoric phase, right? I said this is what is majority of the time what is gonna happen. Um, Oops, what's going on here? Oh, there we go. Uh, we're moving past this 1.618 Fib level and definitely expect some kind of a pullback today, right? Uh, it could keep going, but definitely at some point expect a pullback. So uh, definitely if you have not swung a bullish trade over the weekend, don't take a bullish trade right now, right? You. <laughs> If you're gonna buy up here, then I just you know take a take two pieces of bread, put it beside your ears, and call yourself an idiot sandwich because that's how you lose money. Okay, and uh, if you wanna you know do it, then go ahead because then when the market dips like this, then your own the only thing you're gonna ask yourself is why does God hate me, right? Which is the famous uh, everyday growth advisor's quote. I uh, famously mentioned this, investors always buy at the top here, and then it goes down, and then they're like, why does God hate me? And then they sell, and then what happens? And then it rebounds, right? So uh, try to be a little rational with how you are going to FOMO into this, okay? If you're planning on FOMOing, go ahead, but I'm just warning you that this is not the time to be buying calls, all right? This is the time to be hedging your portfolio, and this is the time to be getting out of your call positions. You should be selling calls to other idiot sandwiches that want to buy your calls at this point, okay? Because this is the moment where you have to be careful, all right? We just broke all-time high, we're getting euphoric, and you should exercise caution. We are far above the moving averages, and you know what happens when we are far above the moving averages, okay? We will come right back down. We came up here, we came back down. Yeah, and up here, we're gonna come back down. It's just it's just the way of the market, okay? There is always a breathe in, breathe up. Breathe in, breathe up. Breathe in, breathe up, right? So, expect it. So, to try and chase one to 2% and then lose 50%, I mean, you could do that if you want to, but I don't recommend it, okay? Uh, be exercise restraint, exercise logical reasoning, okay? Alrighty, can we get to 100 likes today? You think we can do it? I feel like we can. If you can smash the like button one more time, that would be great. If you haven't already, that would be really, really awesome. Okay then. Um, boom, boom, boom. Just trying to read uh, some of these comments here. Okay. So, um, the next level for Spy here, just gonna go ahead and plot it anyway. Um, Oops, not that. Let's try and get the fib here. So let's see. This is the top wave here. This is the bottom here. So let's try and plot this as a. Oops, my fib on this side is weird. It goes the other way. So we're gonna do this, and we're gonna plot it to this wave here, and then we're gonna change this color to. Let's make it, I want to make it white. Oh, what just happened? Why didn't it go white? Come on, man. Oh, there we go. This is the one. Okay, cool. So now we can zoom in onto the four hour level and see what are the levels that we want to actually have a look at here okay so initial projection here would be the 1.618 uh, 
Uh, but I also want to add a few more other levels here to see uh, where those will be. Um, expect us to definitely find this level as a major resistance here. So this level here will be a major resistance. Um, and if we can break out of that level, it will be, you know, pretty much a parabolic uh, uh, rise up, okay? Uh, but moving up from there, we'll have an additional few levels here where we can turn around uh, with impulsive and corrective waves. So watch out for those on SPY, okay? On SPY, this is SPY, just SPX here, okay? Uh, with the Dow Jones over here, it's pretty simple. This one, what we want to really see here is a nice move, um, once again, above, oop, my computer is just acting weird today. This shouldn't actually usually happen. I'm not sure why this happens. Maybe I squashed it too much. Okay, with the Dow Jones here, what we want to see is a break above this channel, right? And then a run up to this, but I don't think that we'll get there right away. There will be a couple of pit stops, right? And just like this, wave up and then wave down and then we'll see a wave up and then a wave down and then a wave up, right? Uh, what, we, what we would like to see is a break out and then a come down to test this channel as a support and then a wave up. That would be really nice. Uh, that's what I'm expecting at least on the Dow Jones, okay? Um, and then on the NASDAQ, we've already broken out. On the NASDAQ, we've already broken out of the top channel, okay? And so the next stop is going to be up here, and then the next level will be up here. So uh, expect the market to be led by tech. That's what we will be seeing, okay, um, over the next few days or so. Now, the VIX is another thing that I'm watching here, okay? Um, and we've been on a nice little downtrend here. Um, looks like, you know, it's about time for VIX to kind of make a nice little wave up. Uh, so this is the reason why I like VIX at this level here. Uh, it has gapped up recently, and I feel like it's going to try and make a wave up above the moving averages here. Um, so I will be taking additional positions in VXX or UVXY probably sometime today, all right? Um, and I'm going to look them up later. I'll post them. I'll post whatever that I'm taking on Twitter, okay, so that you guys can have a look at it. Uh, so if you don't follow me on Twitter... Remember to follow me. My um, handle is EGA Learn. Uh, so E G A L E A R N. Uh, I usually post updates here throughout the day, um, you know, about just general market stuff. So uh, feel free to follow, follow me on Twitter. Uh, this is where I do majority of my communication because it's just much easier for everything to be kept in the same same place here. Okay. Uh, so yeah, have a look at it and see what helps you. Okay, cool. All right, um, I'm gonna read a couple of the comments and then we're gonna jump into Baba here, which is our ticker of the week. Uh, welcome into the stream, guys. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Uh, good morning to all of you. Thanks for taking your time out to be here. Uh, make sure you smash the like button. That's something I really hope that we can get to 100 likes today. I really would appreciate it, to be honest. Um, you don't have to donate, you don't have to do nothing. Just smash the like button, okay? Really appreciate it. Cool, cool, cool. And okay, so let's have a look at this here. Let me just make sure my computer is running at fastest performance. Alrighty, cool. So, oh man, my charger is being all wonky. Okay, I think it's. I think it's better. Okay, tickers, tickers. I see that. Good morning, good morning. Let's get this week started right. Indeed, man. Uh, congrats to everyone who swung trade attack over the weekend. Jeez. <laughs> okay. Um, good morning, good morning. Morning, morning. Liking the music. Follow, follow Type Nine, man. He's on YouTube. Um, he makes some really cool videos, to be honest. Um, he's my uh, beat provider, and he does a really good job. Uh, his uh, Instagram account is at Type Nine, Type Nine, Type Nine. You can follow it in the description and give him a follow. He's a really nice guy. Uh, good morning. Okay, I see more tickers here. We got big fish in here. It's going to be a great week. Ready to get some nuggets. Yep, absolutely. Amazing. There's a new sheriff in the stream, ladies and gents. Let's make some games together. Boom. 
Morning T, it's Toby from Lost Beginners Wave. Thank you. Hey, Toby, how are you doing, man? Welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a great weekend. Uh, how did you find the Beginners Wave? Uh, by the way, guys, for those asking, I know there are a lot of uh, people who have been asking me about um, when the next Beginners Wave is. It's going to be this weekend. Okay, so the signups are going to be 12 p.m. on this Saturday. Um, I'll be putting out information on my Instagram uh, today. Uh, and if, you know, if you're somebody who has taken the course before and you want to recommend it, well, we have a bunch of testimonials here. Uh, feel free to, you know, have a look at the testimonials in Discord. I also post them on Instagram. Uh, lately, you know, people have been writing some really nice stuff. I really appreciate you guys with these kind words here. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what, where to start, man. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I'll read one of these and so you guys can, you know, kind of um, uh, get an idea. So, uh, Ahmad Khan here said... Ever since COVID shut down, I, like many others, decided to really dive in the stock market only to be played hard by more experienced traders and market movers. I first came across EGA and all the great knowledge they were dropping on Instagram. I was tired of trying to navigate through the resources available to me online, YouTube, and just various discards, etc. So I signed up for T's Everyday Growth Advisors Beginner Course. I was hesitant to drop so much money at first in the beginner's course, but I am so glad I swallowed my pride and gave T the benefit of the doubt to reteach me everything I thought I knew the right way. My goal was to learn trade options the correct way where I could learn, understand the layers and build consistency. Having finished the course this past week, I can confidently say that I've learned more in five days than I have in the last two years. I tried to understand the market on my own. T takes all knowledge he himself has built up over the years and condenses it down to no frills, all encompassing course offered through EGA. You start the first day or so by understanding the foundations and slowly build up the comp comprehending all the pieces and various strategies you can employ in the market. The course built up quickly and at times was overwhelming however t is honestly one of the most patient down to earth teachers i have ever had his teaching style was that of one of your homies genuinely wanting to teach you how to set yourself up for financial success i would highly recommend this course because if you have the discipline to dedicate time to learn what he is teaching you i fully believe you will be miles ahead of so many other traders in your shoes thank you so much ahmad i'm not i'm not sure if you're here in the stream but dude thank you very much for that testimonial and review man that was beautiful thank you Okay, let's see here. Like, thank you, Kelly, for liking the stream. Appreciate you. Hey, T, if you see a couple of these tech doc, tech stock, or really any stocks that you have on your eye about to turn bullish, bullish, shout out on Twitter and Instagram. I'll definitely uh, shout it on Twitter. Absolutely. How far out on VIX? Uh, I'm looking at a month out for hedging. Uh, when you sell call options, don't you have to own shares of the of the stock or no? You can if you want to, or you can have a cash collateral. Um, does it more make that make more sense to hang on to 828 hedges or exit and re-enter throughout the day VIX calls and QQQ puts? I would exit and re-enter uh, throughout the day. That's what I would do. Miami Presidente. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see here. Honestly, I'm a newber, newbie, so I'm sticking to calls and puts. Yep, absolutely. Uh, should I take profits on Apple? Well, I did. Uh, that's up to you, though. I have to admit, I only delicately caress the like button. <laughs> Is it smart to sell Baba at open or hold it through the day? I would hold it through the day because I do not know what's about to happen. But I, I'm going to show you guys what I see so far. It was the best investment I have made regarding investing or trading. I plan on attending this live stream as much as I can. Well, thank you, Toby. appreciate you very much for saying those kind words. Okay, let's get into it, guys. Uh, we're going to break down Baba now. Perfect timing. I always break it down around 9 every every time. Um, that's 30 minutes into the, the stream and then we get into the ticker of the week. Uh, can we get 12 more likes here? I would really appreciate you if we can. Uh, 12 more likes, 11 more likes guys. Come on, come on, come on, come on, please, please. <laughs> okay. So Baba, let's get through the technical analysis really quickly. And then I'm going to get into the fundamentals, uh, just a little bit of the fundamentals, not too much because we have fundamental Wednesday for that, where we're going to value the business and see what it does as well. Uh, just a, a couple of things right before we start with Baba here. Uh, I want to bring to your attention that Baba is almost like the um, Amazon Amazon of China. Okay. Except for it has a couple of different uh, business uh, practices. Okay. Um, and we're talking about Baba here. Okay, ticker symbol Baba. Uh, okay, the major differences between Baba and Amazon. Baba does not hold inventory. Okay, so uh, no inventory. Okay, 
which means if no inventory, what do they do? They are a marketplace. Okay. And they operate within many different segments, multi segments. So, um, Uh, financial and they've penetrated this market very well by the way uh, commercial e-commerce right e-commercial let's just say um, and then also um, uh, they operate within uh, cloud space okay uh, and I'll show you exactly what they operated okay uh, also, uh, Baba has a a couple of competitors. So competitors are present in the space. However, Amazon doesn't really have a competitor, right? Think about what business in America really rivals Amazon to the degree that it is at, okay? Not many. So, you must be asked, you must be wondering if if Baba doesn't have inventory, how the hell do they do their business? Well, what happens is there are buyers and sellers and Baba all it does is it makes them meet in a marketplace, okay? Uh, so whoever is uh, a seller who wants to sell on Baba, they put it on Baba's website and then a buyer comes in and buys it. The thing about Baba is they not only offer uh, uh, just like individual SMEs, which are small, medium enterprises, uh, factories, okay, factories can also advertise on Baba, okay, factory sales. So we're talking about, what are we talking about? Wholesale here, Okay. Um, and so their business model is very, I wouldn't say it's like very different, but it's, it's different enough from Amazon. Okay. It's different enough. And they operate within China, which is a big market. Okay. Big market. So, uh, this company is one of actually, uh, the companies that I have, um, you know, very big foresight for it to succeed in the uh, future. Okay. And I really like it as a business. Uh, so let's go over first things first baba's revenue segments okay and this is the revenue segments uh for the past five years okay so one two three four five and i want to show you here uh you can see very clearly that uh the biggest growing segment here is china retail commerce right And uh, right now, it's kind of uh, plateauing, right? It's not a very big, sorry, not gro uh, growing business, but it's a shrinking business, okay? Uh, but what is growing? Cloud computing. Uh, cloud computing is actually increasing. You can see the green, right? The green is getting fatter and fatter and fatter, and the blue is actually going low, lesser and lesser and lesser. So they're comp in the competitive space, um, their commerce retail is actually being eaten up by their competitors. That's what I meant to say. Uh, not growing. I'm sorry. I definitely slipped the tongue there. Okay. Um, now, digital media and entertainment is, has been actually good at some point. But now it's starting to see depression. Okay. You can see the orange, right? Starting to become smaller and smaller. And even international commerce wholesale has seen shrink. The red, right? Uh, lastly, international uh, commerce for retail has also shrinked. So what they're really focusing on right here is to build cloud computing. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, they have a couple of like other innovation stuff that really is a small piece of the pie. Uh, but you can see here um, that Baba's revenue segment has been shrinking for the past five years. So as a business, even though, uh, you know, we see foresight for this business in the future, uh, you have to take into account the fundamentals in order to make a good judgment. You can't just buy the hype. Okay. Uh, so pre-market, this uh, company is already at $273 or so. Um, and here's what the technicals look like. So let me just check the 
Nothing here. Da -da -da. Okay, we're almost at 100 likes, guys. I really hope that we can get to 100 likes. Three more likes, come on. Maybe 110 if we can. Let's do it, let's do it, guys, come on. Um, okay, so the technicals with Baba here. Uh, I wanna show you this real quick. So, uh, we've already breached the 100% uh, Fib zone here, right? Uh, we're currently we're currently here, right? So we breached this level already. We're broken out from the uh, high that we were at for a long time. Uh, now the next level to breach will be the 279 range, which I, you know, what I would prefer today is uh, market open, Baba dump, come down, test this level or a little below it. And that will maybe possibly give us another entry here if you want to play this with upside, okay? Uh, but do am I going to do that though? No, absolutely not, okay? Uh, but what I'm saying is if you absolutely want to FOMO into this, then that's the way you should do it. Like there's a right way to FOMO and there's a wrong way to FOMO. The right way to FOMO is to wait for a corrective wave and then buy the dip, right? That's a smart FOMO. The the completely stupid FOMO is right at the market open, you buy these contracts, whatever, like a 280 strike, and you pay max premium for it. Uh, that's the complete wrong way to FOMO. And I hope that you don't do that, okay? So... <laughs> Just don't be a complete idiot sandwich. Like you can be a partial idiot sandwich, you know, be like a, a smart idiot sandwich, just the way you do things. <laughs> okay, so revenue uh, by the past five years has been decreasing, all right, uh, which is not a really a, a great thing for a business that's this saturated. Uh, but we'll get into the fundamentals on, um, on Wednesday and we'll really go through it. So let's look at the uh, last past quarter results here uh, and you'll see some crazy stuff here. So. Uh, revenue is up 34% uh, year over year. It seems like the revenue is rebounding right now. Uh, so we'll get, I'm going to do a proper revenue analysis on Wednesday. So make sure you tune into that stream. Uh, we'll do a proper fundamental analysis on this business uh, and then compare it to the uh, market segment as well, like JD and other companies that are within operating within the say, same segment. Okay. Um, so look at cloud growth here. It's crazy. 59% year over year. This is, this reminds me of how Amazon grew with AWS, right? Kind of reminds you of the same thing, right? Um, and then you have uh, revenues growing about 34% and core commerce revenue growing at 34% as well. Um, consumers, uh, they have a mobile monthly average users at 874 million. Um, and you have 742 annual active customers. That's, bruh, that's a lot, okay? That's a lot. Uh, profitability and cash flows here adjusted EBITDA at about six billion. That's pretty decent for a business of this size. And free cash flows about oh wait a minute, yeah that's right it's positive. And then uh, non-GAAP free cash flows are about five billion here. So um, the business is generating organically five billion of cash. Um, I, I'm guessing this is for let's see. Um, okay, I wanted to make sure that there's not something in the footnotes here that are just completely crazy. Okay, so let's look at this here. Uh, not to get too much into this, because uh, we're going to do this on uh, on Wednesday. Here, this is what I want to show you. So uh, these are the various businesses that Baba owns, okay? Uh, within core commerce retail, it owns a bunch of businesses, okay? Uh, Alibaba, it owns AliExpress, Lazada. This is a Southeast Asian company. We have it here in Singapore. Uh, they have uh, Tabao, which is another one. Tabao, it's a good company as well. They use that to kind of buy. Uh, it's like a delivery service almost, kind of like how uh, Uber will deliver stuff for you. Um, and then there is a retail company, Fresh Hippo, another one. Uh, and then they have 1688.com. That's China Commerce Wholesale. That's for like factories to sell on international commerce wholesale. That's Alibaba where you can buy and sell internationally and then local consumer services here. Okay. Uh, they have cloud computing, Alibaba cloud. All right. Uh, and then they have a whole bunch of digital and media com uh, components. Okay. Uh, Yuku, this is like a YouTube Tudo. They have, um, let's see, Alibaba pictures, which is sponsor, uh, and then uh, gaming businesses, a gaming company, Alibaba Music. So you can think about it. Like it, They're like the Amazon of China, right? It's the Amazon of China. That's what this is, okay? Um, and the, the only thing is they don't hold inventory. So they don't have warehouses that, you know, store a bunch of shit, okay? They have just servers and buildings where 
they are making um, buyers and sellers meet. Okay, uh, for this reason, obviously, they don't make such a big margin, but they still make money from it, right? So look at the revenue over here uh, for 2020. Uh, this is how the revenues break out into their segments. Okay, uh, so this is this segment is in a big loss. Uh, this segment is in a loss. This segment is a loss, right? Uh, through cloud is in a three percent loss. Uh, this is the adjusted EBITDA mar margin, and then this segment here is uh, uh, at a thirty-eight percent gain, which is the commerce segment. Okay. Uh, so all in all, this business like we need to do a little more analysis to see what's going on, but you can tell, right? Um, wait, is this negative? Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are negative numbers. Da, 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 da. Okay, we'll we'll look more into the fundamentals on Wednesday, but I'm not going to go through all of this right now. Um, and then they have Ant Group as well, which is a financial arm of the business. So uh, they do like small loans, big loans, etc., etc. Okay, that's your Q1 report. Um, not going to go much of it through much of it. We'll cut. We'll kind of go through that more. Uh, also came across this morning saw report that I feel I could share. Uh, let's see what the bulls say. The bulls say here that Alibaba's China marketplace boasted 711 million active buyers as of December 2019, about half of China's total population. We expect a long runway user growth in the coming years as China's population continues, I'm guessing. Uh, we expect that Alibaba will benefit from the ongoing shift of China's e-digital commerce market from consumer to consumer to business to consumer as Tmall can, derive, can drive organic uh, user traffic from Dabao Mobile and help to better monetize transactions. This is two businesses that are um, uh, belong to Alibaba. Uh, we believe the bulk of Chinese internet shoppers view Dabao as their first online shopping destination, implying exceptional lifetime customer value potential. Okay then, and the bears say, um, expansion of China digital commerce players like Pinduoduo and JD, which is a competitor to Alibaba, could slow Alibaba's growth aspirations in certain product categories. Alibaba has invested in businesses outside China that may not enhance its network effects. This could divert management's attention from its core marketplaces and other key business segments. This is a fair assumption. Uh, despite its e-commerce leadership in China, expansion into other site regions beyond Southeast Asia could pose obstacles because of the entrenched position of competing local marketplaces. Well, this is true. So Lazada is here in Singapore, but I feel like people still support the local business called Shopee. Um, this is just what I see from my perspective, right? Um, and I think it, it, you know, it's actually a big thing when you're living in the country and you see it happening. So uh, that's what I go by. Okay, let's read some of these here. Smashing the like button. Thank you. Um, you think we can get to 110? Come on, four more likes. Can we do that? Come on, guys, please, please. <laughs> Okay, so, um, and then, you know, there's a whole bunch of other stuff here that I will go through and condense for you for Wednesday. Uh, but in all in all, it I'm very split between this company because I need to do a fundamental uh, to see what's going on over here. Uh, I really don't feel comfortable buying into a business that is making uh, de decreasing revenues, right? Um, and actually, I just want to very quickly, very quickly have a look at what, what the revenue history is. Because I feel like uh, their, uh, you know, I feel like their report earlier was not very comprehensive. So let's have a look at it really quickly here on Morningstar. Uh, I like Morningstar to see these things because it's just easier. So look at the financials here. We'll look at the income statement and see what indeed is going on. Is revenue really decreasing here? Gross profit is what we're looking at, but okay then. So 2016 to 2020. Okay, so no revenue is increasing. See, I I didn't quite understand what that. They're see because it's a Chinese company, their investor relations are not that great at providing a solid solid um, uh, explanation. So we'll dive deeper into this on Wednesday. Let me do the proper breakdown, um, and put everything into an Excel sheet. It's so much more easier that way for me. Uh, at least when I'm doing my analysis as an analyst, that's just the way that I do it. I don't like to rely uh, on all these, uh, not on their investor relations. So this is what I was doing earlier. Um, investor relations, blah, blah, right? 
And uh, this is where I found what I found, right? It was the presentation for the 2020 quarter results. And what it says here, right? Uh, it says that revenues were decreasing uh, on in terms of st the statista, right? Uh, but what I do see from here is revenues are increasing. So we need to be careful. Um, I, I'll plot everything out properly and then we can have a look at that uh, in a better uh, format. I prefer that anyway. Uh, operating income expenses, wow, really been increasing big time. Okay, well, that was Baba. Uh, let's see if I can do a couple of ticker breakdowns here for you guys. Um, ooh, one more like, guys, come on. One more like. I'm pretty sure we can do it, right? One more like. Okay, Baba, 300 call, 828. Yeah, absolutely not, dude. Come on. I mean, maybe, but I don't think so. 300 is up here. I, I personally, I don't want that to happen. <laughs> like, let me get in first, and then we let's let's have, have that happen after I get in. Uh, breakout here, let's say corrective wave. I see 290 is a possibility, but 300 might be a far stretch. And then you take a weekly expiry, by Wednesday, that contract's dead if it doesn't, um, you know, go in the money. So keep that in mind. Okay, API fifty call nine eighteen. What is API? Australian farms. No, this can't be it. I feel like I feel like you asked me about this last week, and I I like literally said that I don't want to trade this stock. Agora Inc. Yeah, somebody asked me about this last week. It's a $4 billion cap company. It's from China. We don't know what they do. Um, if you're asking solely based on price action, sure, I'll do the analysis for you. Uh, it's looking like it's going to have a bullish crossover here. Uh, so $918.50 call. Yeah, possible. It's highly possible if we get consolidation here. Looks pre like pre-market, it's up a dollar as well. So yeah, there's a possibility that it does go up there. Good morning, TBA, 175, 828. Um, Boeing is at 169 here, pre-market, 168 now. Uh, I mean, you said 175. 175 possible possible 175 is possible i think uh this was the zone that i was i you can see this zone that i've drawn over here this is a nice little demand zone here uh so let's see if boeing can you know come here grab some paint and then start painting up here uh i i'm going to be watching this stock today and this week actually uh, because i think that we're uh, approaching levels where we uh should start buying up here we kind of are bottoming out here so i think uh you 175 might be possible, but you should be really careful because your expiry, this doesn't help you. You need to take a further expiry. Um, uh, I feel like I could go on a tangent and like go off at like why you guys always choose cheaper expirations and you end up regretting it, but I'm not going to do it because I think if you attend this stream more and more often, you'll realize that taking a longer expiry is always more worth it than taking a further expiry, okay? Um, the risk to reward always pays. Uh, okay, morning. Disney 127 puts for 9-4. Um, um, man, I mean, I do agree, but the thing is, I feel like... I feel very in. I feel very in two places about this. I mean, I definitely see the possible gap fill here, below it. But let's have a look at the long term. It is sitting on a, a very interesting spot here. This is the, um, this is the uh, uh, old resistance here, that may turn into new support. You can see that. And this may turn into new support here. I would be more inclined to being bullish here than bearish on Disney. Uh, the recent crossover and this huge volume spike here 
seems like a bullish opportunity, not a bearish opportunity. And then the downside here, look, look at this also. Okay, think about it this way. The downside here is this much to 121 or 122, right? That's where your next support is, right? And if the gap fill, then okay, we go further down to like whatever, right? But look at the upside potential. It's so much higher. So the risk to reward favors the upside here. That's what I'm going to say. Okay. XLI, September 25th, $80 calls. XLI, we, we played XLI and we got out of it early. Uh, might be a good time to get in again though. Um, nice little uh, wedge here formation, we broke out of it. Yeah, I think it might be actually time to get into this again. Uh, for those who got in the first round with me, I may look to enter this enter this one again. Played a nice little run up again on the Dow Jones here. Um, $80 calls. Yeah, I think it should be fine. You can play the $80 calls. And September 9th, September 25th. Oh, yeah, absolutely, Daniel. Nice one. I think that's a good one to hold. Absolutely. I might. In fact, I might get into this one on my own. So I'm going to copy this down and put it in my little uh, chat here so that I don't lose it. Thank you for that very nice find. Come on, stop lagging. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Okay, I might end up playing this one. Just saying right now, calling this one out officially. Okay, XLI. Uh, nice little possible here bounce with the uh, play to the Dow, upside of Dow Jones continues its run up here. Okay, you can see what I'm talking about. We've been talking about this for a while now. If we get rejected, even better, we'll get in at a cheaper price. That will be a good uh, entry for us. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. DLTR 102 calls 94. Dollar Tree 10294. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. I like this one. Nice bullish trend. Really cool uptrend here. Alright. Nice little channel. Um, I would say it's going to go up to test this and then come back down here. So. Um, I would say the next impulsive wave, take your profits and run. Okay, win $90 calls for $918. I played win last week. It paid out just a little bit. $90 calls for $918. Okay, let's have a look at the long-term trend here. I don't feel like win is... Oh, wait a minute. Okay, well, this is a, a defining moment here, right? Look, uh, we had the wave down and then the wave up and then the wave down and then the wave up that was higher than this wave. So I'm talking about the volume here, okay? The OBV. Now we're making a wave down here. If we can get another wave up and then a wave down, this is where we want to enter, okay? This is how, so this is how you recognize trends and waves, right? You have the downtrend. Downtrend makes a lower high, lower low, right? Lower high, lower low, right? And then the reversal, where you see the higher high and the higher low, and you need to enter on the second wave. That's how you play the run up. And I'm looking at the four hour chart here. So we're gonna need more price action to determine this, okay? But uh, technically what could happen here is wave up wave down wave up wave down but this second wave is where you want to enter with wind and hopefully the second wave is above is above this resistance that's what you want to see with wave, with wind then you can confirm this uptrend right now it could still get rejected and come down okay that's just just the way that I'm looking at it Okay. Oh, 114 likes. Can we get to 120? Can we? Can we? Can we? Guys, come on. Six more likes. Can we do it? Let's do it. Please. Smash the like button. Um, VCRA 35 calls October 16. VCRA 35 calls October 16. Um. Uh, Uh, 
possible, but I think the gap fill is going to come first. Pre market, it's already oh, pre market's at twenty eight seventy. It's where that. Um, I I don't like the volume on the stock. It has pumps and then dumps. I I really don't like it, to be honest. It's in a downtrend, right on the daily, and then this big pump came along from nowhere, and now it's dumping. So tread carefully with this one. Google one thousand six hundred dollar calls for this week. Um, I want to say possible, but I think it's you got to be careful. That's all. It looks like a lot of consolidation, and I don't, I don't necessarily like the chart here. It's not breaking out with great volume. If it breaks out with great volume, sure. Facebook, I like Facebook. I'm playing Facebook this week. Uh, I'm in Facebook calls. Good morning, homie. What's up, Alex? How are you doing, man? Welcome into the stream. Uh, can you share your trading view indicators on Twitter? Uh, sure, I can. I have a Word file that I can share. Uh, and on option string. Okay. Yeah, actually, how about this? You just message me an option string and I'll give it to you. It's easier that way. Uh, DHL. Is that DHL? I feel like it's DHL. Uh, hey, uh, Toby, uh, if you want me to cover a ticker, just make sure that you put it in the same way that everybody does here. Uh, give me the strike and give me the expiry so I can cover it for you. Okay. Uh, I think I have a feeling this is DHL, D, not DHI, right? Is it DHI? I don't know. I don't know if it's okay. Wait, what's a strike? Eighty. Maybe. It ha maybe it is Dr. Harden. Yeah, it is Dr. Harden. Um. Wow. Holy crap! What is this stock? Jesus. What the heck? Very bullish, and it looks like it can continue running. Good find. I like it, Chris. Um. D H. DHI, yeah, this one might be like one of those that you can play the hype where it continues to run here. It, it's possible, very possible. And there's more volume coming in as of Friday. <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh. Okay. Just be careful here. Definitely don't be FOMOing into it. Wait for the wave down and then get in. And that's all I got to say. Okay, um, that's all I can do today, guys. I'm sorry, Salty, I couldn't get to yours. I'm sorry, Shreyas, I couldn't get to yours. Apologize, we ran out of time today. Can we get two more likes on the stream? I don't know if we can, but let's see. 120 likes would be really nice. Thank you very much, guys. I uh, appreciate you. Should you sell Apple stocks before the stock split or after? I don't think it really makes a difference. U.S. home building playing boom, booming right now. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. That's a good find, man. I didn't. I never known about that. Um, thoughts about NVIDIA calls? I wouldn't get into them right now. Can you please help me if we buy one month expiry, when should we close last buy? You should close within the uh, two months into, uh, two sorry, two weeks into your one month expiry. So let's say you buy your expiry for a month out and you picked the 28th, then you have to close. So you have four weeks. So one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. So by the 25th, right? So you have to close your option out by the second week so by 11th on the friday before the friday you have to close it out on thursday whoa we got into 120 likes thank you guys i appreciate you so much um and there goes the bell is going to start in a couple minutes here so thank you for tuning into the stream have a great day um and i'll catch you guys tomorrow webinar please come through how to swing trade catch you then peace out guys have a good one love you all thank you for attending bye